and that's quite crucial for our culture, I think. So we really want to have a very clear understanding of who we are building the vue for, and then we decide what it's going to look like and what the features will be. So now, where I am now, I'm now actually working for Revue. Uh, Revue, review, review, I hear it all. <laughs> yeah, we're not very uh, a good name color. Um, so what we do is we're a personal net a newsletter tool. And we're not, a I hear a lot of people saying newsletters. Oh, that's, that's spam, right? How many people of you receive newsletters of actual people? that actually add value. I know you, oh, that's okay. Oh, very nice. So um, that's actually what we do. So we try to build a tool that helps thought leaders, journalists to talk to their audience in a more intimate way because email, come on, it's, it's, it's old fashioned, but you have an average open rate of around 30 to 60%. You, you actually reach your users while Facebook only reaches 10% maybe now. Twitter goes away in an hour. Uh, so it's actually a good way to reach your users. So how did we start? Well, it was, I find this a really interesting story, mostly because we launched on Product Hunt, as, as Sujan said. Um, so what happened was that two years ago, Martijn de Kuiper, who is the CEO of Refu, um, he had an idea. He was following Benedict Evans on Twitter, and he saw he he noticed that with with the time difference between Holland and the USA, he missed quite a lot of tweets and quite a lot of articles that he found very interesting. Interested, and he he subscribed for his newsletter, but he felt that the newsletter was was so optimized and so difficult, like design-wise, that he felt that he, we, he could make a tool just for people who wanted to do that, um, and that's like a design sketch he did. I think this was even sort of a prototype and a, a video of how it would work. Uh, and after a few hours, we had 2,000 users using Revue. And the only downside of, well, downside of Product Hunt is that it's all high profile people. So we had 2,000 high profile people using us, um, which also put some pressure, uh, pressure on the team, which is good, of course. So he was all by himself. So the first step was uh, let's hire someone who can actually build this. And that's what when Mo came uh, along. I joined, I think, three quarters of a year ago. And Vesi and Mark also joined the team. So we're a team of five. Currently, we have around 30,000 people using Revue. And we send out around 3 million emails a month, which we're very proud of. Um, I wanted to say something more. Ah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, customers, like 80% of our customers are from the USA, still because of the Product Hunt lunch. So it's uh, the reason why I ask you guys, do you have newsletters that you follow with just purely content, is because we feel that in the Netherlands, we're not really used to this type of communication yet. For example, if you speak to American people, everybody knows newsletters. Every big journalist has his own, his new, own newsletter. Then you go to the Netherlands and then a, a journalist says, she literally said that to me. I will not tell you who it was. Yeah, but what do I have to say? Like, well, you're a journalist, you write, you tweet, you have 5,000 followers, you have a lot to say. But um, yeah, so who do we have on a platform? Um, on the left, we have Ryan Hoover, who is the, the CEO of the founder of Product Hunt. On the right, I put a, a Dutch example, also a little bit of USA-ish. It's Trump Daily. It's uh, the um, correspondent in the USA uh, for the NOS, and he writes every single day what's happening in America. And uh, yeah, it gives you pain in the stomach sometimes in the morning, but it also gives you some laughter. Um, then we have another one that I wanted to share with you. This one is uh, MJ Siegler. He's uh, an investor. He's a partner of uh, Google Ventures. And on the left, we have our very own Ernst Jan Fout who sends out a media newsletter, which I would highly recommend you as you're all tech people to subscribe to. It's uh, really interesting. So yeah, so that's what we do. Then why do I s show you a slide with uh, Cinderella? So most of the startups, what they do is that they design, um, they design the perfect shoe and then look for the people who would actually fit the perfect shoe. So we try to do it the other way around. We don't design the perfect shoe, we try to fit the lady who would be able to fit our perfect shoe and then decide what the shoe is going to look like. 
Um, and that's quite crucial for our culture, I think. So we really want to have a very clear understanding of who we are building the view for, and then we decide what it's going to look like and what the features will be. So, yeah, <laughs> it's not me, by the way. I've never fell. <laughs> so it's, it's very important when, when we build it is to understand who was our perfect customer and who is the early adopter. I once saw um, this picture and I really like the story behind it because they say that an early adopter is somebody who is like somebody who fell off his bike. It's not everybody who drives a bike because I don't fall from my bike, but it's like the person who falls off his bike breaks his arm and will do anything to cure the pain. That's the early adopter and that's the person that we are designing the view for, which for us you might think, well, why is it interesting? It is very interesting because if we would listen to every single person that joins the view, we would probably become a second MailChimp. You're all aware of what MailChimp is, right? We would become the most pixel perfect newsletter tool ever. But what we do is we try to make sure that people like you guys, who don't have a lot of time, in 10 minutes can create a newsletter on the go and drop it out and it looks good. So you make sure there's content, we make sure it looks good. So yeah, so as we have grown quite quickly, um, when I joined it was very important for me to understand who was the core user of Revue. So what I did is that I interviewed 50, 50 people uh, who were part of Revue, all different kinds of people, female, male, young, old, in tech, in, in real estate, just to understand who they were, what did they have in con common, what were their goals, what did they want to do with Revue, what, what were the features that they were, that, that, what were the goals that they had, what were the problems that Revue was solving, just to give a very clear overview of what the product was actually solving. And one of the things that we found there, which I find very interesting, is that with all the feedback that we received in emails and, and in other messaging apps and stuff that we had on the platform, nobody actually ever told us how important it was for them to get feedback. So when I was interviewing these people, I think 40 out of 50 people said that just receiving an email back from a follower made them so happy. And that was for us like a moment that that we thought, we have to do something with us. We can fixate, or have our KPIs on subscribers and stuff, but having human interaction is maybe something more important. So we started building a feedback tool, um, which is called Refu Reaction. It's a very good name. Um, so what happens is that on the bottom of every single newsletter, you can give feedback, tell what article you liked, if the other newsletter was better than the newsletter before, why maybe some people also suggest articles like, hey, you're talking about this subject. Have, have you thought about, or did you already read this article? So it's a way to have interactions, which is very interesting because after launching this, um, I talked with a few users and they had three to four times more responses on, on their newsletter, which is if you have a base of 5,000 people, quite a lot. So that's uh, pretty cool. Also, for example, the, the Trump Daily guy, he receives now 100 to 200 emails every single time that he sends out a, a newsletter. That's, that's pretty cool, it's quite some... Uh... So another thing that, we fo that I found about purely by talking to customers was how important it was to grow their subscriber list. And this was a difficult thing because how are you going to solve this? So we started with a side project. I have to say side project marketing now from David, because that's what it's called. <laughs> so we started with Discover. Um, mainly because, well, you all are subscribed to newsletters, but you might be interested in finding more or where do you actually find those or how do I know whether somebody has an interesting newsletter. Uh, so, we d so we launched this Discover platform where you can find every single personal newsletter that we would recommend. So it's not all, but it's the best of the best. <laughs> yeah, Sujan is not in there, but... <laughs> We will add you later, no problem, once you move to the view. Um, so, um, uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, which was very nice because we got quite some coverage in the media. Um, that's always nice. But also we were able to get in contact with the people who are already sending out a newsletter but were not using our tool. So it's like the interviewing that, uh, I don't remember who said it, but it was somebody who said in an earlier talk, it's like interviewing your prospects already. Um, which really works for us. There are some people who actually moved 
to, to our platform just because of the side project. And the other reason why we did it is that if you are interested in personal newsletters, we are the first person or the first tool that you will encounter if you land on this cover. And it's going quite well, actually. What I forgot to tell you is that um, from the, from the 25,000 users that we currently have, we grow um, virally around 25% of new users every month come from the product. And how they come is um, uh, mainly because of our referrals, referral system. So we try to create real advocates and we keep very close contact with them. Uh, so they use our referral system or because of just the 3 million emails that are being sent out every month with our logo underneath. Um, that works quite well, actually. There are a lot, lot of people that said that there are some uh, companies that it doesn't really work for, but for us, it's, this is, I think it's 15% of our um, new clients come because of the logos underneath the newsletter, which is quite nice for us.